This is LS, and you're on Thorin's YouTube channel, so cut the Western shit. The topic of unpaid work in esports, or volunteer work as it is often presented as, is one that is seems to cyclically come up again and again on social media, among content creators, and it is nearly always presented or responded to as that it's exploitation or it's unethical treatment of people. And particularly when an organization that people know and people know perhaps has money and has exposure and is, is renowned in the esports industry does a post where they ask for some sort of like news poster or content creator and they say something like, Basically, as long as they don't guarantee you get paid, if they just say something like, you know, it's a volunteer position that may lead to getting paid or it's initially it's a trial basis and then you can get onto it. As soon as it's presented like that, you hear these same complaints come up again and again. And yet what I find bizarre is as someone who worked for maybe a bit under about five years as an editor in chief of esports websites, I was with Winout, then I was with SK Gaming, then I was with Team Acer. So... As someone who was in the position to have to hire and get these people in through the door, I have a very different perspective on this. And I wonder if people have thought some of these factors. So first of all, the idea that it's a simple issue and that, oh, these people aren't getting paid from day one, like that's just clear exploitation. That is just unrealistic in this esports industry. Perhaps not as much now, but especially even a year or two in the past. And I'd argue to some extent yeah, now in the esports industry, because where is the money going to come from that pays this person from day one of working, probably with no experience and no skills, where is the money going to come from and what are they then going to do from day one that can potentially earn the site or the organization money to make up for that? I mean, when, you're, when you go and work a job, you are doing something that helps that company. They don't just lose money on you for months and months and months and months in most industries. This is an area, esports, especially esports content creation, journalism, it's an area that earns a lot less from avenue, from ad revenue and sponsorship than a lot of real jobs do. And thus, pay upon entry into the field is much, much lower. In those jobs, you typically, from almost day one, can start creating some sort of value for your employer, which in many cases directly is sold or used as a service, which makes them actual money as well as gives them value for their company. You typically have a contract when you're working for one of these companies in a real job, which prevents you from immediately going elsewhere if someone offers you a higher salary the next day or leaving the very next day if you just feel like you don't need it anymore. These aren't the cases in esports. In esports, a bad video or an article which only gets a few hundred views won't even earn you one dollar. That's what, it won't even make you one dollar ad revenue. Very few people saw it. What value was created? Now compare that to going to McDonald's and serving someone burgers. Immediately, they're making money. You're providing a service that McDonald's instantly benefits from. Going and stocking a shelf in even a supermarket. Again, people can buy more products now. Things are available for them. You need someone to move the products from the back of the shop to the front of the shop. You've done something that's a value that can make your company money immediately. In the long run, make them more money, and therefore they pay you a cut of the money. It makes a lot of sense the way that's set up. Now consider that most of the people who come into these positions, unpaid work, so they have no experience or track record that's gotten them through the door anywhere else. They could literally have no skill set whatsoever. They've just written an application that someone accepted and is starting to see how they're doing. So they're coming in unpaid or on a trial basis. These people, I can tell you from my own experience, overwhelmingly, like if you get 100 of them, 99 of them have essentially no skills that are discernible that could of value right now or that could make you any money. They are much more comparable to an unpaid intern in a highly skilled field, like trying to become an actor or trying to work in a programming field where you've just come out of school, you've never done anything, whatever it might be. That might not be the best example because I guess people do get paid as programmers coming out. You need, when you join one of these jobs, from my experience, on-the-job training. And so bearing in mind, your editor-in-chief probably doesn't make that much money, maybe makes minimum wage when you consider how many hours he works. That guy now basically needs to babysit you 
on everything, how to post, how to set up, how to write a post, explaining concepts of journalism to you, how to get the news, how to format the news, how to publish the news, how to check over your typos and formatting, how to go to a player, how to ask for an interview, how to do the interview, how to format the interview, how to publish the interview. In some cases, particularly starting with people doing news posting, helping these people learn in terms of on-the-job training is basically just the process of doing the job yourself but much more drawn out, more annoying, and without the guarantee that the person will even learn or remember the basic things you have taught them. There are literally hundreds of people who would do that kind of bad work for free, and hence, there is no market for non-existent skills that do not provide any value to anyone and cannot make any money from the beginning. Payment, pretty much, is getting... a this on the job training. That's a form of payment as far as I'm concerned. You learn a skill set. You learn an, how to even conceive of what an esports journalist or content creator is. You get a sense of the layout of the industry. You get to benefit from the experience of your editor-in-chief or someone higher up who probably does have some skills, some tenure, some experience in esports, can teach you a few things. There's also the factor... That beyond not even being good, I've found that people starting at the beginning, so low-level people, typically barely even do anything anyway. Like even getting a single news post out of someone like that over a three-day span, so expecting them to average one news post every two or three days is pretty high expectation, actually. You'll, you'll go and see a lot of beginners who in their first two, three, four, five, six months don't average one post every three days. And this post might take them 10 to 15, half an hour, 15 minutes to half an hour to write. Then the guy's got to look over it, got to reformat it. Like I say, if it's the very beginning, you almost have to pretty much rewrite the whole thing to them. And then in doing so, explain concepts to them, like how you actually write a news post, what you put at the top, things you wouldn't say, ways you would phrase it, the way that it would be stylized elsewhere. Explain All of this is taking so much time. Then you've got to consider... Let's look at real content. Again, beginner person who has no skills, no history, those sorts of people to even get one or two real pieces of content in any context, even if it's bad, an original unique piece of content to get one or two in a month. Again, that's a big ask. There are, there are content creators you know that don't even do two pieces every single month. How about... The fact that that is not comparable to any real job I'm aware of, even part-time work, you'd be getting a lot more work than that, providing a lot more value, need a lot less training, and would immediately be able to basically make your job, your owner, your boss money. But again, people aren't considering that. Then consider, aside from, essentially, like I said, your payment when you're a beginner and you have no skills is actually getting to learn on the job from someone much more experienced. Another thing that's a kind of payment, it's not monetary, is... Oftentimes these people, and this is not what, what's not often not mentioned, practically all sites that have any real tenure, you no know, actually big names, don't just pay you nothing. They tend to give you stuff early on while you're a beginner before you graduate to the state where you might actually be able to make them some money. So that will probably mean stuff that they get much cheaper, but to you has value. Swag, a team jersey, some sort of, I don't know, fucking pen, key set, mouse mat, whatever it might be. Hardware, how about an actual mouse, mouse bungee, keyboard, headset, microphone. Mice nowadays can run like 80 bucks. Yeah, they're going to get it for free from their sponsor. That's still 80 bucks you didn't have to spend. Keyboard can be $200 nowadays. Someone pays you, someone gives you a keyboard after two to three months of like a few posts, one or two posts every week or some shitty articles no one reads. Someone gives you a $200 keyboard. I don't care that they got it for free. You actually overpaid for that job. Like you didn't do anything approaching $200 worth of work. And yet they gave you something of value at that level that they could have given away to fans to build up their fan base. If anything, you should thank yourself and count yourself you should thank them and count yourself lucky as far as i'm concerned you also sometimes in doing interviews basic things news posts getting quotes have a chance to interact with pro gamers that might be people you idolize look up to you could never contact this guy normally that's not a monetary value sure but it's something cool it's something you're getting out of it and again you might just be a complete rank beginner this might be one of your early pieces consider this from my experience the actual demand for good people in the industry is still very high. There's still a lot of whack people. Like I said, there's a lot of content creators you might know of. They can't even average 10 pieces in a month. And some of them are doing it full time. That's all they do. They're expecting this job to pay their fucking bills. People don't seem to realize, like, 
if I make good money, that's because I've scaled my shit the fuck up. They're just sat around trying to go, oh, how did I do well in that last article two weeks ago? Why didn't it get to the top of Reddit? What do you expect? So how about this? Those who show themselves to be useful and capable tend to very quickly, rapidly, either find themselves in a position to make money at the site they're at, or get an offer from elsewhere, and due to having no contract, due to not being in a position where they have to be held for a certain amount of time, be exclusive, can instantly go elsewhere. In fact, they can often go elsewhere while they're still at this site. They can stay at this site, get free on-the-job training from someone else, and either instantly go and use that training elsewhere for money, or start writing for other sites as well and make money there as well. Where's the exploitation? What's going on here? Think about this. Those who, as a result, don't get to move on and don't get offers, either could not display any value publicly that anyone else could see. Well, as I say, people are desperate for real talent like that. And by the way, the editor and chiefs of sites definitely keep their tabs on who's working at all the other sites as well. And we'll try and snatch someone away and use some of that budget that's very small and isn't a lot of money, but they're trying to get the quality people for that. They'll go ahead and take that guy as soon as he's available. So oftentimes the people complaining, the people you've never heard of, they're like, oh, I didn't make it. And I got discouraged because I didn't get anything for three months. They weren't good. That's one of the biggest problems with any anecdote is what if the person's lying? You know humans lie. You know humans are delusional, overrate their own work, Dunning-Kruger effect. What do you expect? Half these people are full of shit. They weren't actually good enough. So here's the question for you. Who is being exploited? What is being exploited? Like what secret but necessary and somehow valuable work that somehow can't be seen by an outsider or you can't convince an outsider to pay you to do and say, look what I'm doing for them for free. They're exploiting me. And then get hired instantly by another site for even $50 or $100 because any money is important to you. What work are you doing which is being exploited? Like the fact you're working for free, free doesn't mean you're getting exploited. I mean, as I say, on the job training, swag, chance to interact with pros. You actually shit at what you do at your job anyway. What, what money is being made from that job? It'd be exploitative if the site was making money off it. I know a lot of bozos in the fucking esports industry who don't know about ad revenue and what actual editorial staffs are like. will be like, yes, it's exploitative. It isn't, mate. They're not making any money off that guy. He's just a time sink from the fucking editor-in-chief. And by the way, here's another little home truth for you. The majority of the ones who do barely anything and don't do a whole lot and do a really bad job and you waste hours and hours explaining to them how to use posts, how to format it, uh, journalistic ethics, they oftentimes, after a few weeks to a month or two, just fade out. They either say nothing and just disappear one day and then maybe come back a, week, a month later like, ah, oh, I was just busy with school. And then, or... They'll just outright just say, ah, I've lost motivation. And you know what they found? Because they'd never done this job before. They had no clue what it was like. They had no expectation of what the actual work element was like. And they find they don't like it. They just like the idea of being an esports content creator. And they wanted to be whoever it might be in the industry, but they didn't know what the actual day-to-day -day of the job was like. So that on-the-job training you gave them actually ends up being a waste of your time. It gave you a few posts that were actually worse than the ones you'd write yourself. And then the guy just quit. You have to start all over again with the next person, who apparently you're supposed to be paying the whole time out of some non-existent distant budget that you can barely get to pay the quality content creators because anyone except for people with a big name like myself in often times either they have to have a big name or they have to write for a site that's a big name like ESPN, HTC. If they're not doing that, a lot of people you've heard of barely make any money for the site that they write for in terms of making money. They're, that's offset sometimes by sponsorship elsewhere. The person wants to support good journalism or wants to have cool articles written on his website. They're not actually making him like a thousand dollars that he then exploits and then pays them 200 and that's like, ah, oh, workers of the world unite. You'd get fuck all. Workers of the world take the means of production of esports content creation sites and you will be fucking broke mate. It won't be a good look for you, I'm telling you that. So consider this. I am sick of people who haven't got any business or economics understanding making these comments. If a few sites, and we know there's a few sites out there, pay people who do good work, they're going to get all the talent, aren't they? Because someone who doesn't get anything, by your logic, because they don't get any money, because apparently that's the only thing of value to some people, but personally, some of the most rewarding times I had in my career were early on when I made very little, like $100 a month. But I was learning from fucking industry veterans, legends in this business. Some of the shit they taught me back then is part of what I am able to do today. And some of the things I hopefully can pass on to people. So even though you guys discount that because you don't give this guy fucking $10 apparently. Apparently it's better to get paid $10 and get fuck all actual like education than make, get all the on the job training and not get anything like it shows where your priorities are, right? But if a few sites could get those people, that would only leave the bad people working for free.
or they'd only be working free at the very beginning of their job. That sounds like an ideal scenario, doesn't it? Especially when, as I say, you want to test if they're actually going to stick with it. Do they actually even like what they're doing? Here's the secret to making it an eSport. I'll give you the very simple, at the end of the video, just a little secret to making an eSport. So if you want to make it and you've been thinking, ah, but the unpaid element, you get a job by showing you're good enough to do it before you have the job. Think about that for a second. So if you want to be a paid content creator, get your foot in the door somewhere where it's a volunteer thing, it's an unpaid gig, you're basically like an intern. You go there, start learning from the editor-in-chief, start reading other stuff, start asking questions, make your mistakes for free at the beginning when he's not going to be mad because you're doing it for free. Then start creating good content before they pay you. Then if it's good enough and popular enough, People will either pay you at that site or you now have skills in a portfolio you can take to somewhere else and leverage there and get paid by their rival. Take initiative. It's built into what I just said there. When someone says like, contact me for uh, this new job, don't just contact them and say, hello, I would like the job. Can I talk about the job? Send them a CV that you've written out. If you haven't got anything in the CV, you haven't worked for any sites, haven't done anything like that, make stuff up. I've always had a passion for reading journalism. There's my favorite journalist, you know. Here's a short piece I wrote right now, actually, about why I think Meteor shouldn't have been removed from 100 Thieves or why I think Gambit actually fell off due to losing the in-game. Whatever it might be, show, make sure some initiative. Do something that when that guy reads your resume, your application, it's got something to it that makes him interested or makes him think you might have some skill or some drive and therefore he wants to take you on. Don't just tell him. In fact, tying into that, Show him you can work hard and are dedicated. Don't tell him that. Don't just say, oh, I'm very passionate. He spots my life. I'll work really hard. I'm dedicated. You can show him already. You could do some stuff for free before that. You could go post on Medium. You could make a YouTube account. You could do Reddit posts that are really in-depth. You could do any of these things. Take initiative. Once you have any gig, even a free one, deliver your work on time. If you say it's going to be done by 9 p.m. Eastern time, it better be done by 9 p.m. Eastern time. No excuses. Don't tell him 9 p.m. Eastern time if you can't deliver that. Don't set in line with that. Don't set expectations too high or make them unreasonable. What you do is you make them reasonable. If you could kill yourself and do 10 things in a week, and this guy says, how many things do you think you could do in this week? You say five. And then you try and kill yourself. You don't get to 10 probably, but you get seven done. And you know what your boss is thinking? He only told me he'd do five. I thought that was the best case scenario. Fucking hell. He's killing it. You're thinking to yourself, I didn't do those extra three. I wouldn't. Oh, it was tough to make in the end. Or I had to do more research. You've killed it. The expectations have been exceeded. Also, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Who the fuck's going into this? Thinking they're going to make a, a, enough to live off as an unskilled person with no tenure who has never worked in the field before. What, you're going to make full-time living? No, of course you're not. You're going to do it as a hobby. And if you don't quit within the first few years, which almost 99.999% recurring of everyone who's ever done it has quit in the first year or so, then you might have some skills. You might have built up some connections. You might have some industry knowledge after a year where if you're half decent, you can now get paid almost certainly. In fact, sooner than that, if you take enough initiative and listen to some of these things I'm telling you, I would even say as a way to reframe your thinking, if you wanted like an order of importance of qualities to have in this business, I would order them in the following descending order of importance. So the first one's the most important. So I'm not going to start with ability to write, ability to make videos. No, no, the first most important one is reliability. You turn up when you say you can, you do what you say, you do what you're asked and say you can, you do it with consistency or with the same kind of like average over a week, over a few days. So reliability, that's number one. Number two, be hardworking. Do more than you're expected to do. Do a lot of things. Grind, make your mistakes early on, but make them so that you don't make the mistakes later. Then number three, be easy to work with. If you're an arsehole, if you're too prickly, if you answer back, this is one of the things I used to hate as an editor in chief. I'm trying to explain to the guy why he's doing it and why he's doing it wrong. And rather than listening, they go, yeah, 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 but the reason why I did it, no, but I, but I actually have a good reason. It's like, you literally, you're not even letting me give you fucking jewels here that could actually help your industry, your career in this industry. And I'm getting paid fuck all for helping you with this. And obviously I'm not paying you. You can't even do what I'm telling you at the moment. Finally, at the end of all that, I'd say then ability comes in. Then if you've actually got some skills or you've actually got something to develop, then you could make it. But if you don't have those things before, I, I don't think you're going to get your foot in the door, quite frankly. This video was kindly supported by Gardner Wilson, Dean Tanglis, Alex Adams, Eddie Wingforce, Andreas Snazor Westerland, God Awful Waste of Space, Kyla Harris, Travis Greb, 
James Harding, Daniel Yordanov, Vexi, Robert Baxter, and a special thanks goes out to Jerky's Minion. Do you want to suggest a topic or a guest to appear in my content? Do you want to ask me a question in my monthly AMA? Do you want teasers for upcoming content and guests? Want to take part in a discussion about esports with me? Put your money where your mouth is and join the Skrilluminati today. Link in the description box.